a soul tie is something that you are tied to and, and, and you're tied to it because we're going to be honest with it. A lot of times we're tied to it because we want it. So we've got to do the homework to figure out, well, why do I want this? Now, I, I know Johnny is lying to me. I know Keisha is not the woman for me. So what in me, what in me desires him? What in me desires her? What in me desires it? And, and how can I address the need in me so that my soul is no longer tied to that? Hey, family, Prophetess Tara Carissa here, and you are doing life with Lakeisha on Living Her Truth Podcast. Hey family, welcome to the Live In Her Truth podcast where we have honest conversations about what it means to live a purpose-driven life. I am your host, Lakeisha Wooder from LakeishaWooder.com, the place where women receive the tools necessary to feel seen, heard, and supported while pursuing their purpose. And now every week you'll learn those same tools through candid and transparent conversations. Tara, thank you so much for saying yes to having this conversation with me today. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, due to my own personal mishap, I am out of the office, so I am doing the interview live from my car, but I just believe that a word can still go forth. Yes, ma'am. Yes, it can. Yes, it can. So I love to start off every conversation with just talking about how I come to know the person I'm having a conversation with. And so for you, Ms. Tara Carissa, I first heard about you on the Redefining Wealth podcast. And okay. oh my goodness, that episode literally, I promise you, it convicted me. Like oh, to God be the glory. I, I took notes. Like I listened to the I listened to your interview once one time around, and then I had to go back and listen two more times. And I took notes because you just dropped so many gems. You convicted me. You had confirmed some prayers that I was sending mm -hmm. up to God. So he literally spoke through you that day for me. And so when I heard so you on God the glory. Yeah, when I heard you on Redefining Wealth, I started following you on social media, on Instagram. I love your Instagram posts. And I oh, also you. follow your um follow your YouTube channel. And let me tell you, Miss Miss Tara Carissa, your 30 second videos is not enough. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you. And you know, everybody says that, and I have been saying I'm going to get in the studio. And so I'm making a personal commitment uh, to do that in 2020 is get in the studio and really release quality content. Mm -hmm. uh, because you know what? I, I, I think I owe that to you guys. You guys have been faithful and I don't do videos enough. So I, I'm, I'm, you're convicting me now. So I'm personally committed to doing videos. Yes, because you have a powerful voice. You have a powerful word every single time. And even though it's only 30 seconds, you drop a lot in those 30 seconds. Not everybody can oh, do that. Oh, thank you. To so, God be the glory. Thank yes, you. Yes. So I wanted to have this conversation with you. And I'm so humbled that you said yes, because I was a little nervous because, you know, you, you, you big time, Miss Tara Carissa. <laughs> But yeah, but thank you again. But yeah, I was a little nervous, but um, I was sitting in my car. The reason why we having this conversation is because I was sitting in my car in traffic. You know, I'm in Houston, Texas, so you can understand the traffic, right? I so I'm sitting, sitting in traffic, listening to the radio, and the conversation that they were having was on soul ties. And mm -hmm. something said to me, have a conversation with Tara Carissa on your podcast about soul ties. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, made a note of it, and then I sat on it. And it kept coming back for me to reach out to you to have this particular conversation. Now, I don't even know why soul ties, but mm -hmm. stop saying I have this conversation with you. So we're having this conversation. And, you know, sometimes I, and, and somebody could probably relate to this too, you know, I always question the word when it comes to me and I had to, mm -hmm. and I have to realize that I just need to follow directions because everything mm -hmm. is now for me. Just like how mm -hmm. I said your conversation, you know, on redefining wealth, like you spoke, mm -hmm. you know, you spoke to me cause you was answering my prayer. So maybe this is mm -hmm. going to do something for somebody else. So can you, can you just tell us what are soul ties and how are they preventing us from boldly accepting our calling? 
well, you know, I'm going to give you my definition of a soul tie. A soul tie is your soul's unfinished business with healing. Mm. Because once you heal, whatever is giving that other soul access to you, you will no longer need or desire that other person, place, thing, product, service, whatever it is. And that will break that tie. And so mm-hmm. often we think about, oh, I can fast the soul tie way. If that works for you, to God be the glory. But it's deeper than that. A soul tie is something that you are tied to and, and, and you're tied to it because we're going to be honest with it. A lot of times we're tied to it because we want it. So we've got to do the homework to figure out, well, why do I want this? Now, I, I know Johnny is lying to me. I know Keisha is not the woman for me. So what in me, what in me desires him? What in me desires her? What in me desires it? And, and how can I address the need in me so that my soul is no longer tied to that? Uh, mm-hmm. Interestingly enough, when you go to Matthew 4 uh, and Jesus, is he's coming up out of the wilderness. He's on his last leg of a 40-day fast. And the enemy, the serpent, he approaches him. When you get done reading that scripture in, in several uh, versions of the Bible, it ends by saying that there was nothing in Jesus that the enemy could find that Jesus wanted. Well, the reason why you've got a soul tie is because there's something in you that still wants what your soul is tied to. Oh, that's good. That's good. And you know, most people define soul ties as it relates to sex, but the way you just defined it, it can pertain to anything. It, it can pertain to anything. It's not just sex, but, but sex is good because who doesn't want sex? Mm-hmm. I, I mean, come on, God created sex. God created our sex drive. So yeah, it can pertain to sex because if you're healthy and you're not asexual, and some people are, but it, you know, the Bible speaks about people who are born eunuchs, but the majority of people are not born eunuchs. So if you were not born a eunuch, there's going to be some decades in your life where you want some sex and that's perfectly natural and normal. Uh, but yes, it's greater than sex. It can be anything that you desire that is not healthy for you to desire. And so we've got to get to the root to find out, well, why do I desire that? I never will forget. I was coaching a young lady and she was just enamored with this particular man. And I said, well, what is it about him that you like? And as she began to describe him, she finally said, well, I love the fact that he's always traveling the world. I mean, when I go to his Instagram page, he's in Amsterdam on Tuesday, Australia on Friday, Paris on Wednesday, Mm -hmm. London Mm -hmm. the next weekend. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, when's the last time you've been on a vacation? She said, oh, it's been years. I said, well, when you start traveling, you're going to notice that your desire for him begins to decrease because now you're fulfilling within yourself the very thing that you're attracted to within him. Mm. And so she began to travel and she sent me her testimony about a year later to say, oh my God, Providence, you were so right. When I started consistently traveling and when I became the very thing that I loved and I admired in him, I no longer had a desire for him. That's an example of healing a soul guy. Ooh, that is good, Miss Tara. Wow, you, the glory. man, you got me over here thinking because now I need to like sit down and think about some stuff, right? I mean, it can even be in, it, it can even be in your career, okay? Mm-hmm. It can even be in your career. Are you guys still there? I am, but I just lost. There you are. Okay, yeah, it can even be in your career. You know, a lot of times when I coach women, I've been coaching uh, since 2009, you know, women will say, oh my God, I'm just in love with, you know, and they'll name an influencer or another female preacher. And it's okay to admire other people who are doing uh, exactly what it is uh, that you desire to do, but at the mm-hmm, second mm-hmm. that it becomes a soul tie, it becomes you just got to go to that page all the time, you got to monitor them, you got to comment on everything that you see that they're doing. That's a soul tie. Yeah. But when you become what you're seeing that you love so much in them, you will notice that you have healed that desire in you, so there's nothing else left in you for that to the point that it controls your life because that's what a soul tie is it's an unhealthy attachment. Oh, that's going to release somebody. It's releasing me right now. <laughs> God be the glory. God be the glory. I, 
And again, there's nothing wrong with admiring other people and being right. inspired by them. Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. when it becomes an unhealthy admiration, when it becomes mm-hmm, you're on their page mm-hmm. every single day, you got you wake mm-hmm. up in the morning, you gotta go. I mean, you spend more time on mm-hmm. their page than you spend reading the Bible. You're overanalyzing them. You're mm-hmm. trying to compete with them. You're trying to outdo them. You're mm-hmm. bothered when you see them getting a, a, a new platform or they've released a new book. Or, that's a soul tie. Mm-hmm, that's a soul mm-hmm. tie. Mm-hmm. You know, I recognize that, you know, because even in my own personal life, um, I was just sharing this with some friends just the other day. Um, it's no secret that my husband, and I, my husband and I, we have some fertility issues. And so I found myself not necessarily getting jealous, but just kind of getting sad off the people that I was following on YouTube to the point where I had to take a break from it because I realized it's because that's something that I want in my own personal life right? That I didn't have, but I see that they have it. So it, you know, had I not recognized it, that could have turned into a soul tie. Very easily, very easily. And and so it's nothing wrong with desiring anything. Yeah. You know, God gives us the ability to desire. So it's wonderful. And I speak life over you. And I just speak that God will give you the desires of your heart because mm-hmm. to desire a baby is it, a very healthy desire. Mm-hmm. But what I will say to you is this, is, is you're right. Mm-hmm. It can easily become a soul tie. But begin to ask yourself, what do I think this baby will do for me in my life? And most people will say, well, I believe that the baby will bring me more love and give me an outlet to pour more of my love. And that is true. So what you do while you're waiting on God to bring the manifestation is you begin to be loving to something that you can show love to. And you begin to receive and pour love on that which you can. That might be a niece, a nephew. It it might be whatever. But when you begin to pour out and enjoy in the now what you think that baby will bring in the later, then that's going to heal that in you as well. Oh, that's good. You know, I also um, started started therapy back up and the therapist also told me because it, this came up in therapy as well, but she also told me she was just like, in the meantime, that same love that you're desiring to give to that baby, you need to give it to yourself because we re- I realized in therapy that, you know, in my mind, I was doing self-care, but actually I wasn't, I was going through, uh, I'm going through a grieving process because I lost my brother you know, a year ago. And that just, you know, have been a traumatic experience ever since then. And so she literally right. just told me, thank you. She literally, literally just told me that same love you want to give to that child, give that to yourself because I have mm-hmm. been, been hard on myself lately. So yeah. 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 So maybe this conversation was for me. <laughs> for the glory. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, so, there's nothing wrong with a desire, yeah. uh, but it's the enemy's job to come in and pervert all good things. Okay. The mm-hmm. Bible says that God will give us the desires of our heart. Mm-hmm. So there's nothing wrong with desire, but we've got to keep it in a space and a place where that desire does not become a perversion. How do we do that? Lie. How do we do that? Well, you keep, you, you keep it in perspective. And, and when it begins to consume you, you say, okay, God, now I cast this desire down at your altar. So when you begin to become jealous of other people, and it's great that you recognize them, because a lot of people don't recognize when they're becoming jealous. But here's a sign that you're jealous of someone or so, or something, you're becoming overly critical. Mm. Because a lot of times when you're jealous of something, you'll zero in on it so much that you're just analyzing any and everything and finding fault with this and finding fault with that. You're too zeroed in on, on somebody that you probably never even met. That's a sign of jealousy. You're too zeroed in on their life and their blessings and what they've got going on. That's a sign of of jealousy. Uh, And and so, but I applaud you for acknowledging that because we can't heal what we refuse to acknowledge. And so when you acknowledge, okay, wait a minute now, you know, my desire is creeping over into a soul tie and obsession or jealousy. Then you begin to pull that thing back and say, Mm -hmm. now God, Help me manage this desire so that it does not become an idol in my life that displeases you. Because yeah. at that point, you definitely won't get it. Because the Bible says that God hates idols. Ooh, that's good. That's good. So how can we see ourselves? And I feel led to say this. Yes. You know something is becoming an idol in your life when you will do anything to get it. Mm. I-, I just said something right there. Yeah, yeah. If you find yourself being willing to do things that you know you would never be willing to do just to get that man, just to get that woman, just to get that job, just to get whatever your desire is, that is a sign that your desire has become unholy. Mm, That's good. That's good. That's going to release somebody. That's good. Thank you for sharing that. 
Thank you for sharing that. How can we see ourselves the way that God sees us so we can actually pursue our purpose and, you know, pursue, pursue our desires in a healthy way? The only way to see yourself the way that sees you is to meditate on the word of God. Again, going back to Matthew 4, every time the enemy would come and, and try to uh, tempt Jesus, Jesus would always respond back with the word. And so the only way to know who you are is to meditate on the word. The Bible says both day and night. Ooh, that's good. And that's something I know for me, for sure, <laughs> I need to work on because that's probably something a lot of us need to work on. Mm -hmm. And you know what? We live in the modern age. So if reading the Bible is not your thing, we have audio Bibles you can listen to. But you need to find a way to listen to the word and get the word in your spirit daily and consistently. Mm -hmm. I agree. I totally agree. You know, I follow you on Facebook and you put a post up on Facebook that says, God just said, I assign spirits to you for you to learn. Can you break that down for us? What does, what does that mean? Okay, absolutely. Okay, so whenever you continue to experience a particular trial situation, whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. there is something that God is trying to teach you. Mm -hmm. So if you're always finding yourself surrounded by jealous people, what is God trying to teach you? Because lessons don't just disappear. The lesson is going to stay with you until you learn it, because what you're learning in that lesson is needed for your next level. And so God is not going to allow you to ignorantly pass to your next level. This is why Moses did not make it to the promised land, because he didn't learn the lesson of controlling his emotions. And God knew if you can't control yourself in the wilderness when there's no enemy chasing you, you're not going to know how to control your enemies in your promised land when you've got enemies to defeat. And so the key is, is to seek God and say, now, why does this thing keep coming up? What is it that you're trying to teach me so I can learn it, master it, and move on? Wow, that's a mature way of, of looking at things. Because how many times do we go through things and we just say, woe is me, and we blame everybody else, instead of just really, like you said, asking God, okay, what is it that you're trying to teach me? What is it you're trying to show me? What is it that I need to learn? That's Absolutely. That, that's the key. That Because anything that you're going through in your life, God has to allow it. It might not be God's perfect will, but we haven't been in God's perfect will since Adam and Eve fell in the Garden of Eden. God's perfect will was the Garden of Eden before the fall. So we haven't been in the perfect will in a long time. Uh, but but if God is permitting something, okay, and, and that's where we can sometimes go through situations and get depressed because we feel the enemy is in control, but it's just, it's just like the story of Job. The enemy is never in control. Whatever God is allowing the enemy or your enemies to do, they had to answer and get permission from God. Man, I never even thought of it that way. You absolutely right. Mm -hmm. Like they had to get permission. So every hater, <laughs> had to so get whatever permission. you're going through, God allowed it. So God, so the perfect person to ask God, why did you allow this is God. That's the perfect person to ask because he's the only one who knows. And this is why Apostle Paul can make the declaration in Romans 8 and 28. Uh, we know this, that all things work together for the good of the one to love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Because whatever God permits has a purpose. Ooh, including our pain. And in the... Your pain, your failures, your mm -hmm. shortcomings your environment. I want to talk to somebody that's listening in. I want you to hear me and I want you to hear me clear. Your childhood was not a place of pain. It was a place of purpose. The reason why you were in pain is because you have assigned an expectation to your childhood according to the world that we live in, instead of assigning the expectation according to the purpose that God has for your life. Perhaps God allows you to go through what you went through in your younger years because God knows that the purpose that he has assigned to your life had to be connected to a pain in your childhood so that you could help heal somebody else in your adulthood. See, we don't like this kind of teaching, but the reality of it is, is that there's a reason why we are called servants of the Lord. A servant of the Lord is just like a soldier in the army. You don't get to choose where the army sends you. You don't get to choose where you're going to be stationed. You take your orders and then you go work them like a good 
soldier. Well, I thought I'd tell somebody that if you thought that this life was supposed to be perfect, that's part of your pain right there because you're angry that you don't have the Huxtable lifestyle. Well, I thought I'd tell somebody else the Huxtables didn't grow up like the Huxtables. Just look at what Bill Cosby is going through. So somewhere we have bought into the fantasy that this world has said we should have had when the reality of it is, is that God's ways are not our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. And what the world calls pain, God calls purpose. And if you just go on through the process, Joseph made the declaration in Genesis 50 and 20. He said, now you meant this for evil, but the Lord has used this for my good. And when you finally start seeing the good in what you've been through, we see further on in Joseph's life that God gave Joseph a son by the name of Manasseh, which meant I remember the pain of my father's house no more. And so what that means is that when you go on through the process and you endure like a good soldier and you understand that everything that I've been through is not even about me. The divorce was not about me. Whatever I went through with my childhood, it was not about me. God is going to assign you a Manasseh that will cause you to remember the pain no more. <laughs> man miss tara oh my goodness you guys i'm gonna need y'all to stop and rewind that and listen to that again just because that was so good you know in your oh my goodness in your your interview on redefining wealth i underlined that your pain, your past was necessary. Your past will point you in the right direction of your millions, the millions that you are yeah. to impact. I wrote that down, underlined it, and put exclamations by it because that right there released me. Because as a survivor, the glory. yeah, because as a survivor of sexual abuse, I I've known for a long time that my purpose is surrounding that because I need to share my testimony of how mm -hmm. God, you know, brought me through that thing. Because in order for me to survive, I had to get to know who I was. And in order to get to know who I was, I had to know him. So that's how hey, I was hey, able you know, to get my I, healing. I, I, I want to challenge something in the body of Christ. And I expect to get some flack on this. Email me. Trust me, I can handle it. But I want to say something to the people th that are listening in. What if God picked your trial? L let me say this one more time. What if God picked your trial? Prophet, if I don't believe that God would pick my trial, then you don't believe in the word of God. Because for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So if God will give his son over to a trial for the redemption of mankind, how do you know that God didn't pick your trial to help somebody else too? And this is why I share my story. And this is why I give my testimony. And yeah. because of your words, this is why I have set the lofty goal to get 1 million downloads from my podcast. Because that's how I'm going Amen. to reach my millions. It's through my podcast. That's how I'm going to reach my millions. Because you're absolutely because right. What if he did pick my trial? And even if he did, if he picked my trial, if this was what he said I needed to go through, then he obviously equipped me to go through it. Because it didn't break me. It made me stronger. It didn't kill me. I survived it. Right? So I think that a lot of us, we get so caught up in the trauma and the pain that we're not even like pulling all the goodness that comes from it because there's good that can actually come from it. I've been on stages Absolutely. and gotten off stages and women have come up to me and just said, thank you so much for just sharing that because there are still grown women who are still dealing with something that happened to them when they was five and six years old. But just hearing mm. me, you know, just talk about it and, and talk about, you know, from a place of strength and confidence and love for myself, that in and of itself, you know, has helped so many women. Just that right there. Yes, God. Oh, absolutely. My goodness. We have to share our stories. We have to. We absolutely have to absolutely. share our stories. You know, um, Miss Tara, you are a gorgeous woman. And oh, thank you. And I think that you like the way you look and carry yourself is different from or goes against what people tend to think a pastor should look like, if you will. And I remember when Megan Good, when her and Devon first got married, you know, I felt like people were attacking her because of how she dressed, right? And I feel like with you, you have really owned your own personal style. 
talk to us about that. Talk to the people out there who, you know, God is calling them to do more, you know, and they're afraid because of how, you know, uh, the church is going to look at them, how other, you know, Christians are going to um, look at them and judge them. Like, how can they own who they are and still walk in their faith? That is a great question. Um, and, and here's the answer to that question. Um, you need to tune people out. I, I, listen, you have, there's no other way to enjoy your walk with God and your call, your purpose, and your assignment other than to tune people out. People didn't make you. People didn't give you your call. People did not give you your assignment. Holiness is not found in clothes. Holiness is found in how you treat people and how you obey God. You know, the reality of it is, is, is this, and I'm, I'm going to use a couple verses here. Jesus looked so much like the men of his day that when the Roman soldiers came to arrest him, they needed a betrayer to see, well, which one is it? That lets me know that Jesus didn't look so different uh, that everybody would know, oh, that's the son of God. He looked like the men of his day. Uh, and, and so the reality of it is, is that the Bible goes on to say that we're not to look on the outside. Uh, you know, man looks on the outside, but God looks on the inside. And, and so I say, don't judge me by my appearance, uh, but, but judge me by my fruit. That, that's what we're supposed to be looking at. We're supposed to be looking at what is my life producing? Uh, what is my call? What is my anointing? What is my ministry producing? And, and so that's what I would say, but I'm not here to defend it because I'm going to, you know, keep wearing my lashes and, and my fake hair and whatever else I want to wear. <laughs> I am. Uh, but, but what I will say to anybody else that's wanting to be authentic to who they are is tune people out and get in tune with God. And when God see, and there are times, you know, God along the way, you know, God has cleaned me up in certain areas, and I'm sure that he's going to keep cleaning me up as I go. But the reality of it is, is that it's God's job to clean me up. Uh, and, and because I have a relationship with him, I know that wherever I'm going wrong, he will speak to me as he always does. Mm, 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 mm. That's good. So that's why we need to just show up how we are every single day. And like you say, tune people out because worrying about what other people say, what other people are going to, you know, do and judge you, it holds us back. And, and why should we let it? You know, the Romans had to act Roman that's not over something that's not a salvation issue. You know, I put up a post a couple of days ago and, you know, regarding this whole debate about should women preach. Listen, if I'm wrong about women preaching, this is what I do know. It's nowhere recorded in the Bible that a woman preaching can send her to hell. So even if I've missed it, it's not a salvation issue that can send me to hell. So I'm not going to get caught up in uh, minor issues like that when we've got greater issues going on in this world that can impact people's salvation. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Why do you think people focus on the minor things? You think it's a distraction for the big things that's going on? That that that's human nature. That's that's the nature of the flesh. And and that's why you've got to learn how to tune out people. You gotta learn how to tune out flesh and go with God, the spirit of God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Man, this was an awesome conversation. I am so glad I sent that. Well, thank email. you for having me. <laughs> I'm so glad I sent that email. Can you give us a uh, yeah, I wasn't in my office? We totally misread it. So I'm in my car. And we just left the movie theater, but praise God, amen. So, uh, but I am enjoying it and I want to thank you for having me so very much. Absolutely, absolutely. But before you go, can you give us a book recommendation or audible book that has changed your life that you would like to recommend to the audience? Life Code by Dr. Phil. Let me say that again. Life Code by Dr. Phil. Okay, I'm happy that to check that out. That will your life and set you free. It will, a lot of people don't know the doctor feel that he's a Christian, uh, but in addition to being a Christian, obviously uh, he, he, you know, is a therapist. And some of the things that we uh, deal with in life, you, you need uh, spiritual understanding and then you need practical understanding as well. And you know what? It's funny that you say that because you are a life coach as well. So, oh, yes, and I'll be a doctor by the end of 2020. Yes, oh. John. <laughs> All right. Because a, a lot of the issues, a lot of the issues that people face, it's not just spiritual, baby, it's mental, uh, past trauma, trap trauma, you name it. And so the Bible says, and all that getting, get an understanding. And in my, all of my years of life coaching, I've been life coaching now since 2009. I can tell you that people get healed when they get an understanding. 
Ooh, that's good. That's good. You're right. Um, one final question before you go. When describing the meaning of living your truth, what is the third word that comes to mind when you hear these two words together? Self-awareness and purpose. Peace. Mm, yes. That's good. That's good. That's good. Because self-awareness brings about purpose and purpose will bring you peace. Yes, God. Every time. Miss Tara, time. thank you so much for having this conversation with me on today. Thank you for having me. I'm truly honored and glorious enough to speak life over your podcast and life over your own. Oh, wow. Thank you.